Hello and welcome to week eight. Uh, so you know in the first seven weeks I've been saying that everything is kind of much more the same and just extending out that endurance. Well now we're getting into really the fun part. So that, that first seven weeks was really preparing you for some pretty serious work coming up. Uh, so especially next week it starts the first key brick workout. There's three really big important workouts. Um, and next week the first one of those. And so uh, we have some work to do this week to get you ready for that. Uh, the first one, the number one key workout of week eight is going to be the run, the 10K benchmark workout. And again, what you want to do here is you want to find a stretch of road that you can run uninterrupted, no stoplights, no stop signs, and you really want to push yourself. So 6.2 miles, uh, you want to go as hard as you possibly can. You don't want to go so out, so go out so fast that you fall off though, so make sure you pace yourself. If anything, you want to be steady or get faster through the end. And then uh, what I want you to do is I want you to make sure you warm up and cool down before that too, by the way. I want you to take your 10K time, go to the internet and uh, Google Run Smart Project, and you can select the distance 10K and put in your time. I did a little example, I put in 50 minutes, 50 minutes is an 8.02 pace. And then if you look down below, there's three boxes and one is equivalent. And that's gonna give you your half marathon equivalent. So if you're running 50 minutes 10K, the projection is that you're gonna run a 151 half marathon. Okay, so we know in the half Ironman, you're gonna be at least 30 seconds, you know, to a minute per mile slower. So adding six and a half minutes to 151, you know, you're going to be 157 and a half. I put 158 to roughly 204, okay? So now what you can do is you can figure out what a 158 half marathon, what that breaks down to pace. What does a 204 half marathon break down to pace? Since your pace for the 50 minutes is 8 minutes, we know that this is going to be um, 830 pace, maybe 9 minute pace, right? The better your triathlon is, the, the closer you'll be uh, to your open half marathon pace and closer to this 158 somewhere in there. If you have a not so great race, you're probably going to be slower than 204 given that 50 minute 10k, okay? So now you can use that in your brick workouts. So if you're doing your brick workout and you say, okay, well, I have no idea how fast I should run. Well, that gives you an idea of how fast you should try to run going out in that first mile and then you see how you feel. Is an 8.30 pace in this example too fast? Do you need to slow it down? Uh, maybe you need to do nine minute pace, <clears throat> right? So that gives you an idea. You can also, at the end of the brick workout, then you can evaluate how did you feel running that pace and then how does that pace compare to your projection? And then throughout the three key brick workouts, the more you really tune in and see how you feel, it's gonna make predicting your race time easier and give you a better goal to shoot for, give you a better idea of what you can do on race day. And that's how you can use this 10K benchmark. Um, you did the benchmark once before, it's also a good motivator and it provides you an opportunity to see how much improvement you've had. Let's say we're using the 50 minute, let's say last time you did it, you did 52 minutes and now you did 50 minutes, right? So you know that you went two minutes faster, you can figure out the pace on that. So that's a great way of seeing improvement. Okay, so that's how we can do, use that benchmark 10K. And another note is that because this really is the number one important workout of the week, you can do it any day that you want. You don't have to save it for Saturday. If, uh, if Tuesday is your run day and you have the time to do this, this workout, then great, do it on Tuesday. Um, so think about that, where you're going to position this run, run. The second big workout of the week is the long bike ride. Now, uh, for some of you, you may have gotten off to a bit of a slow start, and here you are at week eight, kind of starting to freak out a little bit because your biking, say, is maybe only about, you know, an hour and a half, 25 miles. That's okay. You still have time. But the key is to realize where you're at now and where we want to get to. Now, ideally, being eight weeks out, if you can ride 55 miles, that's great because that's basically the distance of the race. So if you're at that point and you can do that, then we know we can really build upon that in the next eight weeks of the schedule. If you're at 25 miles, then we need to start ramping you up slowly so that you don't get injured. So 
on this weekend, we might say, hey, let's have you at least ride 35 miles, okay? Ideally, you'll be riding about 45, 50 miles because next week's uh, brick workout, I believe is a 45 mile bike ride or time, depending on where you're at. So, um, you know, if you do 35 miles this weekend, then that next weekend is gonna be a little bit more challenging, but we still wanna just keep moving you up, okay? So you still have time to get your distance up. But ideally, you can get in somewhere between three and a half to four hours or 45 to 55 miles. You wanna pick the lesser of those two. So if you ride 55 miles and you, you live someplace without a lot of stoplights, stop signs, you can go pretty fast and you do that in three hours, great. That's a three hour ride. You don't need to keep going beyond that. I do want you to insert um, four sets of 20 minutes at race pace, plus 10 minutes a little bit harder than race pace, and then make sure you take an easy 15 minutes, um, easy spin recovery in between those sets as you go through them. Um, right after I get done shooting this video, I'm gonna shoot a video that I'm gonna call Race Pace Isolation, and talk about, for cycling, how you want to use the lap function either on your watch or your Garmin or your bike computer to record some key data so we can look at race pace. Because a lot of times people will say, well, I don't know what race pace is for my bike. Okay, so the next video, race pace isolation, um, I'm gonna get into specifically talking about race pace for cycling. Other key workouts for week eight, um, tempo swim, three times 400 yards. And so basically these 400 yards, and you wanna take, um, we'll take 40 seconds rest, um, or about three, 400, it could be four by 300. I think it's four by 300. Um, so let me erase that and go four by 300, a little dyslexia. Um, four by 300 sounds more like what I'd have you do, um, cause that's gonna be 30 seconds rest. So those 300s, you really wanna swim those as steady and as hard as you can, but again, you don't wanna fall off. So if your first 300, let's say it's at uh, you know, 505, five minutes, five seconds, we really want two, three, and four to be pretty close to 505, if not getting faster. We don't wanna go 505, you know, 510, 520, 530. Okay, I'd rather have you do them all at 515 pace. So pick a pace, um, try to be really steady at that. Think about a pace that's a little bit harder than what you're gonna race at. And then again, try to stick to a 30 second rest. If you're in a really crowded pool, that may, might be a little bit more challenging, um, you know, cause there's the send offs don't always get meshed up when people, there's a lot of people in your lane. So, but as best you can stick to 30 second send off. Um, the fourth key workout is the race pace bike workout. Uh, it's another workout midweek and then taking 25 minutes, just maybe slightly harder than race pace. So again, I want you to find that effort, whether you're using heart rate or watts, and really dial into what it feels like to ride race pace, so that when you get out there on race day on the course, you know how it feels, you know where your watch should be, you know your heart rate, you know your metrics, so that you can have a good um, bike ride. One of the things that most of us do, and especially beginners, is we bike too hard. We overdo the bike, and then we really pay for it on the run. So we wanna dial in and figure out how hard you should be biking so you can still run when you get off. That's gonna enable you to have your best race. And then uh, five and six would be the threshold run, two by two miles at 10K pace plus 10 seconds. So if your 10K pace is 802, then these would be at 812, right? So 10 seconds slower than your 10K pace. Um, take a rest in between there. And then six key workout would be a distance swim. So, you know, once a week, we wanna do something a little bit faster, and then we also wanna have a longer distance swim. If you live in a place, or if this is a time of year where you can get outside and swim in an open water situation safely, then by all means, do your distance swim outside. Um, you know, go for, go for at least 45 minutes an hour if you can. And it's also good when you're doing these distance swims in the open water, do a little bit of tempo stuff. So maybe like for you know five minutes, swim a little bit faster than race pace and then five minutes easy. You know, you can set your watch to repeat or you can just sort of fart lick style running but take it to the water and just um, you know pick a dock that you're gonna swim a little bit hard to and then pick another point where you're gonna swim a little bit easier and keep doing that to mix up the intensity. That'll help you out. All right, that's week eight. Um, getting there about halfway, so keep up the great work. Thanks.